kilogram welterweight. The judges are Argentina, Vietnam, Ecuador, Finland, Colombia. Vamos à luta semifinal da categoria meio médio, pugilistas com até 69 quilos. Os juízes são representantes da Argentina, Vietnã, Equador, Finlândia e Colômbia. The referee from Brazil. O árbitro é representante do Brasil, o senhor Jones Kennedy Silva. Please welcome the boxer in the red corner, representing France. Por favor, recebam o pugilista que ficará no canto vermelho, representante da França, Suleiman Sissoko. Please welcome the boxer in the blue corner, representing Kazakhstan. Recebam também o pugilista que ficará no canto azul, representante do Cazaquistão, Dania Kielitsino. We move up to the 69 kilogram welterweight division, and we are at the semi-final stage. Both of these boxers guaranteed Olympic bronze, but of course they want to make it through to that final bout where they can contest championship gold in the welterweight division Introducing the boxer in the red corner, representing France. Apresentando o pugilista no canto vermelho, que representa a França, Suleiman Sissoko. Introducing the boxer in the blue corner, representing Kazakhstan. E apresentando o pugilista no canto azul, que representa o Kazakhstan, Daniel. We're in the semi-final of the 69 kilogram welterweight tournament and this is a blistering start between boxers who know one another very well indeed. The boxer wearing blue operating out of the South Pole stance is Daniyar Yalusinov of Kazakhstan, the number one ranked welterweight in the world, the tournament number two seed and the man wearing red representing France is ranked number 35 in the world, that is Suleiman Sissoko. They have met twice before and on both occasions, the man in blue has been the victor. One of the best boxers in the world, Danny Yalusinov. World Championship. Gold medalist back in 2013. Comes in here as a silver medalist and now he's beginning to try to engage and go through the gears, targeting both body and head. Suzuku. Suzuku, rather. He's got to drag Yalusinov into, into a real war here, Ron. Um, and he's doing it mainly because Yelusinov has just decided to stand and hold his feet in this opening round. And uh, one thing I like about Yelusinov, though, he will he will just stand outside the punching range into that thinking distance, and then he drifts in, lands the shot, and then he's back out again. But he makes you miss by inches sometimes. So Suzoko has just got to increase. Just we've got to increase the, the pressure a little bit to go forward, just to close the gap slightly. 
And if he can do that, he may just bring Yelusinov onto the shots, but he certainly needs to rough him up, get him to hold his feet, which he's doing. But he's got to throw more shots here, the Frenchman, because at this tempo and pace at the moment, it's probably suiting him. We know Yelusinov's very good on the outside. He can box at range, he can move very well. But he's opted to stand in trade here, and this Frenchman should take advantage of that. Well, at the moment, it's him being taken advantage of because that southpaw left is beginning to find a home despite the wonderful box puncher you loosen off electing to stand and trade and box Sissoko's fight in many respects and I don't mean this in any disrespectful way Sissoko is almost a poor man you look you loosen off he can box well on the move and at short and mid-range as well but from what we've seen in the past you loosen off remember two-time Aiba Boxer of the Year in 2013 and 2014. Does everything just that little bit better. But how much has Sissoko learned from their two previous encounters as he runs onto another shot there? And look at, the, look at that shot. The long shot where you can see the feet. Look how close the lead legs are coming together. And look how you loosen off principally will just step to the outside to ensure that he's the boxer controlling the different distance. I think also, Ron, you loosen off. He's just making a statement in this first round that he won't be pushed back. He's showing the judges that he can push his opponent back, fight that type of contest. But it's a close round. Very close round, an action-packed round to the delight of the fans here. How will the judges score it? Because if, well, the scoring of the first round is going to be critical in determining the tactics in the subsequent rounds. So, Yelusinov decides to stand in trade, had some success with that left hand, that was nice, but Suzoko had his some, some, some success also, Ron. Downstairs, good left hook here, look, from the Frenchman. So it was a fairly close round. Got the good one-twos, though, that caught the judges' eyes from the Kazakh. Let's have a look. Across the board for Yelusinov. So that statement that he made is certainly got home with the judges. And now, depending on what Yelusinov elects to do, of course, but he's the man with the options. If word gets back to that Kazakh corner, he could well get up on his toes and choose to box and move. Because he has that type of ability. So into the second round we go. Daniel Yelusinov contesting his third bout of Rio 2016. It's been a tough run to this point after receiving a bye in the first preliminary round. He eliminated Great Britain's Josh Kelly, the number seven ranked boxer in the world in the second preliminary round, and then defeated the Olympic bronze medalist from London, excuse me, Olympic quarter finalist from London four years ago, Gabe Maestre, at the quarter final stage to progress through to the medal stages. And now he's getting onto that front foot and forcing Sissoko backwards. Sissoko contesting his fourth bout of Rio 2016 beating men from Hungary. A terrific win over Parvis Par Par Bagirov of Azerbaijan in the second preliminary round. And then he beat the three-time Olympian Selam Ardi of Thailand at the quarter-final stage. The concentration on Yelusinov's face is probably why he's world number one. Tremendous there, and just steps in with the jab. Very quick off the mark. Look at the concentration. Mouth open a little bit, but nevertheless, waiting watching looking for the opportunity and now he's back on his bike so again demonstrating he can box from range but in that first round he showed that he can stand and trade so yeah he's got it all this fella in blue and by making that statement in the first round this is his strong suit Yelusinov hitting moving and in that type of posture he becomes even more difficult to beat Sissoko has got it all to do here, and he's got to come on strong and try and close that gap. Will you loosen off, accommodate him in exchanges at centre ring as he did in the first oh. round? Oh, my goodness. Bad cut, that is. Oh, my goodness. Well, this is the third contest in a row where we've seen fighters sustain cuts. That was a bad head clash, wasn't it? And here you have a world number one. Heads coming together. Let's have a look. As they come in. My goodness. You know, it's, it's accidental, isn't it? But, well, there you go. And there you have a world number one boxer. Well, that oh. has curtailed the contest. Now, he will have won it, though, because it should surely go to the judges' scores. So that was an accidental head clash. Yes, indeed. 
accidental clash of heads. We will go to the scorecards. Remember, the first round was scored unanimously in favor of this man. The portion of the second round that is being completed will also be scored by the judges. And so we will receive those scorecards by way of announcement. But for what? In bout 2.15, 2.16, this is contest number 2.17, we have seen significant injuries sustained by boxers. We had one this morning as well, Mohamed Rabi, the world number one welterweight. An abundance of eye injuries, this the only one that's caused the contest to be stopped. But this is the flip side of making the boxers safer. According to the study, by removing the head guards and lowering the incidence of concussion, the susceptibility to cuts increases. And here, we see a bout that's been stopped by an accidental clash of heads. Let's get the announcement to determine who goes through to the gold medal bout. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner by unanimous decision. Well, the Kazakh fans in attendance here are absolutely ecstatic. So too is Danny Yelusinov. He has the opportunity to keep this outstanding run of Kazakhstan alive in the 69 kilogram welterweight division. They've practically annexed it and made it their own personal property. Kazakhstan seeking their fourth Olympic welterweight title in a row. Yelusinov has the opportunity to do that, having won unanimously on points at this bout that was